Welcome to a special edition of Loop TV. It is Zillow and Open Shares in Free Fall, joined by Loop's own Doug Clinton. Welcome, Doug. I wish today was not the topic, but here we are. Shares of Zillow and Open over the past few weeks have been down 30% plus. That sharp decline, they are not alone. Many of the other transformative tech companies have had uh, punishing impacts to their share price over the last few weeks, but Zillow and Open Door, it is more acute. And I want to start with, we continue to be investors in Zillow and Open and continue to believe in these for the long haul. We are long-term investors, three plus year time horizon. And as we think about that time horizon, we really think about our investment thesis in three pieces. First, the theme, second is the team, and third is the near term and the trend, if you will. So quickly on the theme, we continue to believe in iBuying. It's a better way to buy. It makes it easier for consumers to get in and out of their homes. It's small today, but we think it's going to be more significant in the future. The team, both CEOs, I would put them as somewhere between good and great. And I think that especially Rich Barton from Zillow, he's clearly an asset to winning investors and building a great business for the long haul. So let's jump into the trend, bring Doug in here. Doug, when you see the tweaks to the interest rates, you see some of the home builders today trading up, and then you see Zillow and Open in a free fall. What's your reaction to it? What do you think is causing this? I think for Zillow and Open Door, you know, it's about the cost that they incur in interest as part of the iBuying experience. So obviously when they purchase a consumer's home, they are taking out a loan and they're paying some interest on that loan. They're trying to keep the, the time period that they hold that house as compressed as possible to minimize the interest level. But obviously, if you go from you know rates that are historically low where they are today and even add you know nominal 50 basis points, let's say to it, or 100 basis points, you kind of factor that into your long-term model. And it does have a meaningful impact on, on forward margins. And so I think it's it's probably, you know, that obviously, like you said, I think tech valuations in general were elevated. I actually see that part of this whole market pullback right now as a very healthy thing. But even let's say if all of tech wasn't pulling back, I think you'd still see Zillow and open down a little bit today and over the last few weeks, probably just not to the same magnitude that we're at right now. Indeed, it is all about the margin. And we think back to Amazon and how they talked about margins increasing over time. They could never quite get there. And uh, just to quickly frame it in, if you look at the interest expense related to the iBind for Zillow, it's about 0.5%. I think it's like 2 or 3% for Open Door. And uh, Zillow has $4 billion in cash. Open Door has uh, $700 million in cash. If we assume that interest rates go up by a percent, it costs each of them about $15 million a year. It's less about the near-term costs. It's more about really calling into question whether or not that this is a good model. The iBind model ultimately will yield the margin expansion that investors want. I can see why a more near-term investor would be concerned about what we're seeing. Uh, what do you make of it, Doug? I mean, we have to put ourselves in an environment over the next few years. I would mm -hmm. plan that rates are going to continue to inch up. Uh, why isn't this a good time to kind of rethink where we're at? Well, I think as with most businesses, you know, the elements that result in your end margin are multifactorial and interest rates are one input to the broader I buying concept. You know, the other inputs are how long do you hold the house? Let's say rates are higher than they are today, but Zillow and Open Door find a way to, to sort of shrink and maximize the time that they hold the homes, you could have a net effect of zero to the margin, or you could actually have a net positive effect to the margin. So I think that that's one thing you have to factor into this is, you know, interest rates are important. So is time to hold. So is the amount that they charge to customers that sell them the homes. There's many levers to increasing margins and decreasing margins, as it were in the case of interest rates, that I think we have to factor in here. At the end of the day for us, I think, what we feel is a certainty of all these kind of factors into the margin model is that the consumer experience is really great. Consumers want this experience and I think they're willing to pay for it. 
it's just a matter of Zillow and Open Door finding the right mix between all of these different levers to create a sustainable business that has a decent margin, given all of the, the elements that go into that. Yeah, good reminder that margin is made up by more than just interest expense in this case. I also recall with Amazon and talk about some of the uh, FBA fulfillment by Amazon services and they started to inch up some of the, the what they were charging sellers and then they raised the price of prime and and then they kind of figured a way to keep the margins kind of intact to get to this transformative point. Is that probably what we should expect from Zillow and Open Door in the years ahead? Well, what I would say is you think about what they're charging today, which is high single digits roughly, if you kind of put all the math together versus the work that we have done and Will from our team is spearheaded. We think there's something like 15% of a home's value that is available as part of a home sale transaction. And so right now we're talking about uh, Zillow and Open Door taking something in the high single digit versus the 15%. And so I think the other thing we should think about, kind of to your point, is that there are other elements that they can dig into and that they can kind of optimize around and gain more margin by getting into other components of the sale. Mm -hmm. Outside of what they move into there, maybe the right way to think about it is that, you know, it takes a year or two longer than people had hoped for before, before we start to see really positive EBITDA margins from these companies. But for us, you know, our, our models are built on a very long term. If that gets pushed out from, let's just say, these aren't our real estimates, but let's say from 2023 to 2024, it doesn't impact drastically how we think about the investment because ideally we're hoping to hold companies like this for much longer than three to five years. Makes a ton of sense. Staying the course here at Loop for Zillow and Open Door. Thank you for reminding us the importance of margins on behalf of Doug, our margin professor today, and myself, Gene, and Loop TV. Bye for now.